welcome all. I'm quite excited to have you in this little session. This is more of an awareness. I just want to hear about your experiences as a leader working in a VUCA environment. I have some stories I would love to share. And there is some interesting uh, stuff, uh, some interesting data I would love to share while I've learned working with various organizations globally. My name is Krishna Chodipilli. I work with some of the organizations. I'm also a coach and a change agent for Leadership Tribe. In this uh, webinar, we are here to learn together. We are not here to say who has the, uh, who's agile is right. There is something called perspectives. One of the things I've learned um, while visiting my sister in uh, DC, I was in a, for a work trip to New York. So I went down to my sister's place, which is Maryland, which is like five and a half hours drive. Amazing kids, my nieces. We were quite excited that we we're gonna do something in the evening. All we had want, wanted to do was go upstairs, check the fireworks. I was downstairs working with some things because I was on a business trip, trying to update my expenses, send some reports through. And I could hear the kids screaming so excited. I looked out of the window, eh? nothing. All I had to do was when I went upstairs with the kids, it was 10 feet, 10 to 12 feet above. My perspective changed. So people have perspectives. People also have the personal interest, personal biases. So what we do is we bring that awareness to the table and ask the question, what do you think about it? What should we do about it? For everything we do has to have a purpose, has to have a reason. Don't you all have a reason today instead of spending the nice, lovely evening on a Friday evening in England, it's approximately 4.15, 4, 4, 5. Yeah, 4.08 and you're spending some time with Krishna. It shows that you care and we care for the people who care for themselves. So if you have an opportunity, wherever you are, raise your right hand. Thank you very much. So let's go on to the topic and see what I have installed for you. Okay, the first thing I have is what does WUKA acronym stand for? Let me see if I can pull up my poll, launch it. So on your screen, you should have a little question. Click on the link, what should WUKA stand for according to you? Okay, we got another 20 more seconds. The numbers are coming up, numbers are coming up. Another 10 more seconds. All right. Almost there. You got the last five seconds. Three, two, one. Let me share the results. Okay. So most of us have opted for volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous environments. Amazing. That's what VUCA stands for. This term was coined by the American military. Let me... This, call, this term was coined by the American uh, military, a US military war college. So volatility refers to the nature and dynamics of change itself and the nature and speed of change forces and the catalyst which, which increases the volatility. Uncertainty refers to the lack of predictability potentially for surprises and sense of awareness and understanding of issues and events. Complexity refers to the multiplex of forces, con confounding of issues and chaos. There is so much chaos everywhere. Ambiguity refers to the haziness of reality, 
potential of misreads and mixed meanings of conditions, cause and effect confusion. This is the definition of VUCA in a short form. What we have seen with organizations is organizations are disappearing. 52% of the Fortune 500 companies have disappeared since 2000. If we add COVID to this reality, what we are facing, do you think the numbers have gone up? If it's a yes or no, type it in the chat window, please. Few S's. I agree. I agree. World right now is in a different place. Org customer behaviors is changing. Uh, the way we work is changing. The way organizations are operating has changed. Previously, consumers, participants, or wherever, they used to go around organizations. And now, organizations are going around the consumer behaviors, trying to understand what would work for them, trying to understand or give them options or reasons to buy stuff which they don't need. How many of you bought stuff which you don't need? For me, I bought myself a spirit animal, if you can see my camera. They are stuff. There is a lot of business intelligence being used and organizations are learning and adapting as we grow. Some of them are really successful because they do understand what the markets are really, they, what do they need? Understanding the consumers, the personas, and the intensity the VUCA, when you're talking about the VUCA environment, it depends on uh, the way we change things. It depends on the intensity. Say, for example, we are having this webinar. A fire alarm is kicking off in Krishna's place. I'm talking you through my apartment right now. Do you think this webinar is going to happen? Let me answer for you. The answer is no. That's a crisis. The next thing is the threat. If we do not change the way we are doing, we might not exist six months from now, five years from now, that's a threat. And some organizations do change because it's an opportunity we're gonna be better. And one thing I've seen with organizations or even individuals, human beings right now, they are reacting to things which they don't need to according to Krishna. Let me tell you, let me tell you the reason why, according to me, you can be the best judge for it. In the, during the Neanderthals, we got the hunters, gatherers, and you also know when during those times, we, when there was a smoke, two mountains below, our ancestors, they used to move from one place to the other, because if there is a threat, they move. They are problem solvers. And they also be, used to be cautious about this saber tooth coming and picking one of those people. That's a, those are the threats they used to face. And right now, are we facing the same threat? Do we need to react the same way? That's my question to you. I want to share a story about my girlfriend. This was at one point in during the university days, during the 98 2000 early before 2000 i was staying with my flatmates uh we had a uh, called it a house rat a pet rat my girlfriend that time came down she was staying over for a weekend she saw the rat in the place and the moment she saw it the way she reacted i thought i have a new girlfriend completely she was completely levitating from the ground. Can you believe a human being levitating off the ground? That was a real crisis for her. Me, I grew up in farms. I grew up in rice mills, rats. I used to have a pet rat. <laughs> it was a little mouse. So that was a crisis for her. And during these days with COVID happened, things are changing drastically. 
and we are living in a new norm. New reality, when we are living in a new reality, as a leader, one should assess the situation at hand. Instead of, you can be my girlfriend, what she has done, of course, she had a proper fear of a, a, a mouse. I know another friend of mine who's scared of cockroaches. Out of the, me, I'm scared of geckos. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them. It's the way we react. So as leaders, one needs to understand the reality. If you want to function in a VUCA environment, one needs to understand the current state. There are some tools out there in the market. There are so many opportunities you can use. These tools help you to solve problems. For me, this is an example of a tool. Have you seen this before? It serves a purpose. And this is an example of a tool. It serves a purpose. Depending on the problem, one needs to adapt the right tools for the right purpose. There are processes, frameworks out there in the market. One needs to know what should we do. And while I've been working with various organizations globally, one thing is pretty, pretty much clear. There is so much knowledge and content people are aware. Let me, let me see, let me test it out with you. I'm gonna share some information with you and see if you're already aware. If you know you can use these tools, which you are already aware. But the way, the, what I've already done is organized it in form of a framework for people can use. That's what it's there for. Let's check it out. So we understand things change because if it's a crisis, threat, and opportunity. Before I move forward, can change happen overnight? Type it in the chat window. Simple question. Can change happen overnight? Could I say yes? Can I say no? Possibly, unlikely. Okay. Nobody said it depends, possible. Okay. COVID happened. Governments made a rule saying that lockdown is going to happen. Did change happen overnight? <laughs> yes, it depends. If there's a fire alarm kicking off, change will happen in this webinar as we speak. So change can happen. One needs to know what is causing these environments. The moment you are aware, one can prepare accordingly. So as a leader, while we are of operating in the VUCA environment, we understand we might be working at the team level or a business unit or at the enterprise level. Out of curiosity, where are you working? Team level, business unit or enterprise? Type it in the chat window, please. Team level, okay, Robin, uh, Robin says team level, Kula says business unit, Sunil team, Natasha team, Olu enterprise. Brilliant, we have a mix in this room. Okay, so the next challenge I have is people who work at the team level, people who work at the business unit, people who work at the enterprise level, see if these tools, which I'm gonna share with you, will apply. That's the challenge I have. Is that okay? I take that as a yes. On that note, <laughs> thank you, Trish. This is the VUCA we are talking about. So the VUCA, first part of the VUCA, let me see if I can get some spotlight here. Ah, uh, my mouse. So as a leader, one needs to un understand about the situation. So volatility, uncertainty, ambiguity, complexity. Yes, how well can you predict the results of your actions? Here, yeah, understanding the current state while you're doing it, there are other things in the mix. There are people, there are processes, there are products, there are environments. So as leaders, can you work alone? The, according to Krishna, the answer is no. 
So leaders are only successful if they are collaborating, bringing people together for a common purpose. So as COVID is moving, we are moving to the new normalcy. How well do you change to the new normalcy? How well can you execute your strategy? Because here, the VUCA, which you, I am talking about, we are changing into virtuosity, from volatility to virtuosity, is a pursuit of innovation, acquiring new skills. When, when so many things are there happening at the same time, what skills, what tools are there? Improve your knowledge. Improve your knowledge. See what you can do to help them. If you're having so much uncertainty, it talks about the fact of being common everywhere. Visibility, the transparency which you can bring in. Some common things across the teams, in organizations. I have seen people working in silos, different business units, solving the same problems and asking the same and using different tools. If these challenges are open, can they be, can we learn from different teams? Answer is yes. Ambiguity to adaptability, adjusting to the new conditions, adjusting to the new normalcy. How do we do that? Complexity to continuity, being okay with change. One more change, one more, I have seen, lean transformation i've seen six sigma transformation now agile i've heard enterprise leaders talking about agile is old wine in new bottle ladies and gentlemen agile is just four values 12 principles nothing else that's it there is much more one needs to understand at the deeper level i work with various organizations who are embarking this agile journey Agile, donkey, waterfall, whatever you want to use, is it solving a problem, a purpose? That's what it's all about. If it's not going to help you, why do you want to do it? That's my question to you. That's the thing I want to think about. If you're talking about different tools and frameworks, I would like you to uh, check out the history of Agile. One of my webinars I've presented, it talks about the different frameworks, tools out there which you can use. Deming talks about plan, do, study, act. Planning is all about understanding your vision. What are your objectives you want to achieve? What are the metrics you're going to use to measure? What is your strategy you're going to deliver iteratively? That's called planning. Doing is executing the strategy iteratively. Study is learning from the data, learning from the data and acting. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That's in 1940s, ladies and gentlemen. 1940s, it predates Agile. There's so many rich knowledge and information which already exists. If you're a leader, if you call yourself a leader, try this. Start, stop searching for new information and start looking with the content you already have. What is the existing tools I can use? What is the existing knowledge and frameworks I can use to help deliver some value? So there are so many amazing training organizations out there. If you know an amazing trainer, spend some time, learn from those people, get, get a mentor for yourself. There's nothing wrong. If you see in Olympics, these people, these sports people, they are working and practicing at the optimum level. Do they have coaches? Do they have trainers? So if you want to win the Olympics of your career, there is a question I would like you to ask. What do you need? Think about it. So again, frameworks, tools, plenty, plenty. There is one thing, open your eyes for other methods. There is also a framework, check it out. So if you're talking about lean and agile, agile is about flexibility and adaptability. Lean is about eliminating waste. Out of curiosity, can we agree on these definitions? Simple definitions, eliminating waste, flexibility and adaptability. Yes, no, 
simple factors would be fine. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jad. Jadi, Trish, thank you, thank you, thank you. The next question I have, can we push lean to an extreme or reduce the waste to 0%? The answer is yes. Is it practical? Is it realistic? Will it help you to achieve your goals? The answer is it's impractical because agility is about flexibility and adaptability. If you're forcing lean, the flexibility and adaptability is out of the window. For that, people need to think about how do we bring them together, hybrid frameworks. That's the reason I would love people who understand frameworks at the deeper level. What are their purpose? If I'm using Agile or Scrum, Kanban, is it going to solve my problem? That's where I would recommend leaders to start from. But if you think, I know this answer according to me is right, Krishna says, you're right, you should go for it because that will help you to test it out. Believe in yourself. I would love if you say, Krishna, I believe in this and this is what I believe. Go for it. I trust you. I work with various leaders and I love leaders who love to experiment. That's one of the behaviors of leadership. So leaders should experiment. In a VUCA environment, when you have a volatility, you need to build innovation in your organization. When problems are coming, people should not reacting, but playing and working with your teams to achieve that value. So for all this, one needs to have system thinking. People say, what do you mean by system thinking? First thing I would say, when you talk about system thinking, I don't want you to think about systems, computers, inter connections, platforms, nah. Stop thinking about systems in that way. For a minute, for Krishna, humor me. I want you to think about systems as a planetary system, system as a family. So are you part of a family? Ladies and gentlemen, are you part of a family? Hi, Jadir says, yes, 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 yes. We are a part of a family. In families, is there a structure? In families, do you have internal stakeholders, external stakeholders? In families, do you have situations where you don't intend to, un consequences happen. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you about me. As a kid, I loved adventure. As a kid, I loved speed. I was a pain for my parents. My parents didn't stop me from doing, experimenting, anything, but the only thing they asked me was, wear a helmet. And Krishna wanted to be a free bird. They didn't go well together. And the hospital visits and the things, there were consequences which happened. Consequences happen in organizations. It's not about being a bad intent. Everybody knows the vision, the reason why we are working hard. Everyone knows. But the how question is that's the challenge. Because families is a web of interdependencies. Organization is also a web of interdependencies. When you have a web of interdependencies, you need to think as a system. As leaders, you need to be like Zoom cameras, zoom out, look at the big picture, zoom in, look at the problem. If you're making a fix, if you're trying to bring some change in, how this change will impact or affect the entire ecosystem. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, you do need to have system thinking skills. It helps. It helps. It's not only that. There are a few more tools I would love to give you. For anything, this is one of the tools I have in the arsenal. It's the system thinking model. Right now, in your organizations, I want you to do a small test mentally. Things happen, shit happens. Things go wrong at the last minute. True, yes, no. 
Yes. Thank you. These are events which just happens. When events happens, sometimes depending on the intensity of the event, there might be a shitstorm or meh. So we react. We react to those events. When we are reacting, it can be a lot of chaos. I have a recommendation for you. When you when you're seeing these events happening, look for patterns. I work with leaders, they gather data, data in the name of metrics. And some of them are useless metrics, artificial useless metrics. Find the right metrics to understand why these events are happening. Look for patterns. In this data, when you're collecting the data, there are patterns. And what trends are coming up over time? If you're really curious, to fix this issue from the DNA level, dig, leaders dig, where you're looking at the underlying structures. What is influencing these patterns? Okay, VUCA is happening, markets are happening, but internally within my organization, can you do something about it? The answer is yes. The choice is yours though. The choice is yours. The answer is yes, according to Krishna, the choice is yours. The people, who really care, they push a little bit further. They look at the underlying structures, what has influenced these patterns, and they don't stop there. They go even deeper and understand the models, the underlying assumptions. The people who created the structure, they might have done it five years, 10 years ago for a problem they had at that moment of time. Is it helping? This is where you bring transformation from. System thinking helps, ladies and gentlemen. You need to have it at part of an arsenal. Now you are aware, there are a few more. What else are there? Ah, this is my favorite quote. <laughs> One needs to seek the truth or hide your head in the sand. And for both, you, it requires digging. It all depends on how much you care. And uh, if, if you're asking Krishna, in your exact words, what do you mean by it? If you give a shit, it will work. That's according to Krishna. You have a choice. So, then as leaders, where do you spend most of your time? Type it in the chat window. What's the percentage of your time you spend in meetings, in the chat window, type it in. Trish is saying 40%, Praveen's got 70%, Mark got 60%. Austin got 60 to 80%. Old role was 80%. Okay. We are working, we have different percentages. Now, leaders or coaches, consultants, whatever role you are doing, you are doing virtually. When you're doing virtually, the tools need to be different. You need to have better tools to serve, to build that engagement with your participants. So if you're spending more time there, do leaders need to improve their facilitation skills? Think about it. In facilitation skills, Krishna, my team don't switch on their cameras. I tell them, you are empowered. Switch on your cameras, switch on your cameras. Nobody does it. What should I do? Should I sack them? Like, seriously? Seriously? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with COVID, I have worked with some people in my organizations and various organizations globally as well. There were people in, in, in the teams I served, one bedroom, parents in the same house, COVID is happening, lockdown, kids, family, working from home. Some people are not comfortable. It's the environment you create as a leader. So Bruce Lee talks about a, a, a very interesting one. Uh, what is, he asks, what is the shape of water? 
Let me ask you the same question. What is the shape of water? Type it in the chat window, please. In which state? I love it. Austin, I like it. Shape of water like this, dude. <laughs> Looking at your screen instead of the camera in quite discerning, by the way. Thank you very much, Francis. Gregory, the container, the shape of the container. No shape. Okay. According to Krishna, it's the shape you give. The container is yours. It's the shape you give. You have the power. An environment, the team environment you create is yours. You have power over it. You have power over it. I want you to think about it. Facilitation skills are must and have. Uh, Simon, I don't like that. Um, for some bizarre reason, Simon, I don't like that movie. I was a little bit disappointed with that <laughs> shape of water. That's a different view. Coming back. When you're talking about facilitation skills, this is something I would like you to be aware and see what are the tools processes, frameworks you can use to bring the engagement of your audience through this virtual world. Face-to-face, -face, you will be using different tools. Virtual world and face-to-face, -face, are you adapting your tools as well? Think about it. Think about it. Pre-COVID, most people hated meetings. <laughs> During COVID, it's still the same. And during COVID, what I also realized was loud voices became more louder. Small voices became, they disappeared. That's what my observation was. What are your observations as a leader? This is a question I want you to answer yourself. Okay. Welcome to reality. It is what it is. So what? Colorado, what? coronavirus pandemic has instigated a different reaction. Businesses are putting the purpose at the front of their recovery plans. This is a fact. Working with various organizations like IBM, Unilever, oil and gas industries, these clients have reshaped the way they work with their employees. I am loving it. I work with them. I'm seeing that this change, some of you might be experiencing in your organization. If you're not, be comfortable putting the purpose first for anything you do. Your project, what is the purpose? Your leader, what is your purpose of your leader? Think about it. Can you put the purpose of your team members first? Can you do that? If you can, it might help, according to Krishna. Finally, the powers. I want to give you some powers as part of this webinar. Let me quickly go through it. So I got something for you. By the way, these are my superheroes, all my superheroes I love. And superheroes have powers. And I believe the people who care, the people who give a shit about things, the people who really want to push themselves, they are superheroes according to Krishna. The people who are in this webinar listening to this chat, they are my superheroes. Oh, yes. These are the ones we are talking about. For leaders, one needs to be an agile lean practitioner. I got a simple scale in front of you. In that scale, what I want you to do is ask yourself one means, zero means I don't have a clue, 10 means I wrote a book. If you got a pen and paper handy, do a self assessment here. In this self-assessment, one needs to be an Agile Lean Practitioner. Lean, agile Lean Practitioner, how do you bring frameworks together, build hybrid works to deliver value? Lean and Agile, can they work in, can they coexist? The answer is yes. For that, you need to know how about frameworks at the deeper level. Otherwise, most of the discussions will be like, my Agile is better than your Agile. My scrum is better than your scrum. My version of truth. And you hear a lot of them. Get some understanding at the basic level. What is the purpose behind these frameworks? 
what do they do how do they solve the problems there's tons of literature online and if you're interested i would recommend you to follow the leadership tribe uh, on linkedin group there is well, so we have various uh, authors uh, professors who work with us as well as some consultants who work with us whatever they've learned they publish it on the linkedin so spend some time on it so we will be more than happy to learn from it we'll learn from each other as well so this is something i want you to be aware about agile lean practitioner where are your skills can you bring hybrid frameworks together if it's zero to ten grade yourself teaching can you teach people in such a way that that learning sticks people come for training programs three days yeah kumbaya also excited when we go back normal mentoring as a subject matter expert can you mentor people to enrich them in such a way they are successful better than what they are personally and professionally professional coaching is helping people get the own answers finding their own solutions facilitation playing a neutral role bringing people together for a common purpose or an outcome that's the role of a facilitator Pro coaching and facilitation is around the process one needs to know the process content is created by your team your participants leaders don't need to worry about it so your job becomes much more easier for teaching and mentoring yes you need to have those skills ladies and gentlemen if you want to grow if you are not then that's also okay and there are some other masteries get these basics right get the teaching mentoring agile lean if you're using whatever waterfall frameworks or any frameworks what go to a deeper level learn to be a coach for your teams facilitating there are three other masteries out there if you are interested to dig more i will be more than happy to explore and help you with those topics and how to bring change how to look beyond the curve and how to you be a technical master no matter which domain you come from no matter which domain agile is not for it only if you look at the history of agile whatever terms in the name of agile we are doing it's there the content is already there check it for yourself so this is a question i have there's this amazing gentleman mohandas karamchan gandhi i love that dude he's not there on the planet but i love him i he's such an inspiration for me his biography i love it be the change you want to see in the world if you can't be coached how can you be an amazing coach if you can't be coached or trained to be a leader how can you be that person so you know who needs to take the action here yeah. what action would that be think one in your head one thought one action you don't need 10 or 100 one one is enough to start to start your journey one step and from there you have a question should i take the next step or not so these are some of the powers i would love to give you this is a tool which i love and it's been harvested from different frameworks power stand for p the purpose what is the purpose of a leader you as a leader your purpose your vision so being a leader what are the outcomes you want to achieve what are the outputs you want to achieve how do you want to measure them what is qualitative quantitative metrics would you be able to find them what is in it for me as a leader what is in it for my team as a leader what will excite them motivate them inspire them how are you going to engage your team engagement is the key for being a great leader ask yourself even if you're not engaging with your own family members do you think you can have a great relationship with your kids with your other half you answer that question for yourself it's all about engaging what tools you're going to use there are plenty of tools out there some of you if you have come down to my training programs or various training programs from ic agile scrum kanban there are plenty of tools ladies and gentlemen what can you use for the right moment you need to be aware of those 
what are your roles and responsibilities when you're working with your team what are their roles and responsibilities in the things what you want to achieve what you want to overcome what is it you want what is it you want and the last thing and the last thing is self-care let me ask you a question if you didn't sleep yesterday, if you didn't eat properly, do you think you will be having a great day today? Simple question, yes or no? We all know that. We all know having a good sleep matters. We all know looking off this vessel, your body matters. But how many of, let me ask you out of curiosity, how many of you had a good sleep last night? Type it in the chat window. <laughs> some of us did, some of us didn't. And those people, if they are in your team, people who didn't sleep, do you think they'll be able to deliver the value? For these leaders, they need to look after themselves and also educate your team members to look after themselves. That's a very important self-care. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna give you a term. It's called biofeedback. Google it, check it out. If you, need, if you think it's, it's going to help you, tag me on LinkedIn. What did you learn from the term biofeedback? That's the, answer, that's the challenge I'm giving you. Tag me. Find out if it's going to be a tool that's going to help you. Biofeedback. My colleague Chitra has put, uh, given my LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to reach out to you. And on that note, one final question I have for you all. Are you being mindful or mindful? Ah, Q and A, Q and A. I forgot Q and A. How to engage my silo team member? Okay, Praveen, there are a few tools I would like to use. First thing is one of the tools I have is called Curiosity. It's so simple and stupid. When people say curiosity, a person is being siloed or calm. There is always a reason. When I I got two amazing nieces, amazing. I love them to bits. I love them to bits. And uh, when they were born, like one day, two days old, in the same house, babies, when they're one day, two days old, they need to be fed every four hours, three hours. So I can hear the little ones crying sometimes. And, so, and there were times I felt, open the door, window throw the baby out <laughs> all i could hear was ka, 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 annoying or what could krishna do find out what is making the person behave the way they are doing it can be the baby wants to need a hug or hungry or a wet diaper there are reasons so when you're working with your stakeholders understand the behavior what you're seeing they're not talking too much what is causing it and the behavior which you're expecting how is it going to help you bring them bring that visibility to your team member and ask them what you can do to help them or what they can do to bring this opportunity so there are multiple ways and if I'm giving you my answer, my answer is for an employee or one of the team member, it worked for me. Does not mean it might not, it might do. The answer is what else is out there? On that note, think about it. Try some experiments, let me know. There are some few tools which I use as well in my facilitation. When I'm working with my, in the daily standup, instead of saying, uh, colleague one, what is your colleague too? Nah, tell them. So who wants to kick off, nominate the next person? Everybody finishes the stand up, nominates the next person. It goes on. It's called passing the stick. There are some simple tools you got. 
where even a silent person will be forced to talk. Find out the problem. There are many tools out there. Passing the stick, silent brainstorming, plenty. Okay. Uh, sure. Thank you very much, Praveen. There is from Rakesh. I'm into training. Any suggestions about uh, which process I should learn to boost my career? When you're into training, one needs to understand about the adult learning. We are adults. And as adult learning, one can say, this is a framework, you do this X, Y, and Z. Or you can make it experiential. There are multiple ways of training people. You can use training from the back of the room. I have my own framework, which I've been uh, working on with some of my coaches, where I use tools and technologies to help me have a better engagement. For example, uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Okay, this is a tool I use where I'm able to use multiple tools where I can share my screen, keep the people engaged, engaged and how do we enable them to help to get there? So there are tools, there are processes, there are frameworks. You can use them. I use a lot. If you're curious, I would like you to reach out to a hello at Leadership Tribe. They'll be more than happy. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, longest way up, shortest way down. Have a lovely evening. Mm -hmm.